36 years and I have been doing this all wrong. Have you done single beam survey? I have all my life and I was wrong. I mean, look at this and this and these. You see what I mean? Let me break it down and explain it to you. In general, single beam has two frequencies. Low frequency 20 to 40 kilohertz and high frequency 200 to 220 kilohertz. Secondly, low frequency works best in the deeper water and high frequency works best in the shallower water. And thirdly, low frequency can penetrate woozy soft mud but high frequency cannot. So using both the frequencies you can get a very good idea about the seabed especially if you are planning to do a dredging survey. We also know that low frequency will show a little more depth than the high frequency. Okay, that's it. That's where most of our knowledge about single beam ends. One last thing. Single beam low frequency transducers are much bigger and heavier than high frequency transducers. So what I am talking about? What I did not know for 36 long years. Have you seen that your main line and your cross line or your tie line depths always have a mismatch? Especially when the seabed is irregular and sloping. Have you ever thought of that? So what's happening here? Low frequency and high frequency single beam echo sounders have different beam width. Low frequency beam width varies between 10 to 30 degree and high frequency beam width varies between 5 to 11 degree. What it means that each and every low frequency single beam ping ensonifies a large area on the seabed. How large I am talking about? A 30 degree beam width low frequency transducer will produce a linear coverage of 8 meters in about 15 meters of water depth. Remember, position reference of a single beam echo sounder is right at the center beam or at the nadir. So a low frequency single beam single ping can have a positional accuracy or horizontal uncertainty of about plus minus 4 meter in 15 meters of water depth. And that's a whopping 27% of the depth. Wow, that's incredible. And that's not the total horizontal uncertainty or the THU I am talking about. Let me ask you this. How many times did you use a motion sensor to apply a roll and pitch data to the single beam position? Never. We generally use heave for the single beam and not the roll pitch. Now, I can't possibly tell you how much positional error you can have in your single beam position if you are not using MRU roll and pitch. I know you are going to say that the single beam only accepts the shortest time return pulse. And you might say that it is the center beam. My dear friend, you are right and wrong both at the same time. Remember what I said previously, especially when the seabed is irregular and sloping. Here is a little animation to make you understand. You are doing a single beam bathy survey. Let's zoom in a little bit. So you see these two beams? Which of the returns get back first? Which one is the quickest? This left side echo, right? And what will be the position of that return echo? the center point right now do you see what i am talking about your talwek survey line might be completely wrong so what shall we do simple use high frequency echo sounder in irregular and sloping seabed better yet use multi beam echo sounder keep asking questions and keep learning always Always ask questions. I'll see you around.